From Loretto Abbey, home to the Sisters of Loretto since 1928, and the Loretto Abbey Secondary School, and with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. The televising of our Mass today is made possible by a contribution from Maria Arias of Toronto. This Mass is offered in memory of her father Manuel and her sister Noemia and for the souls in purgatory. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves now to celebrate worthily the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness that for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. On the day of the dedication of the temple, King Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord, in the presence of all the assembly of Israel and spread out his hands to heaven. He said, O Lord God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven above or on earth beneath, keeping covenant and steadfast love for your servants who walk before you with all their heart. But will God indeed dwell on the earth? Even heaven and the highest heaven cannot contain you much less this house that I have built. Regard your servant's prayer and his plea, O Lord my God, heeding the cry and the prayer that your servant prays to you today, that your eyes may be open night and day toward this house, the place of which you said, My name shall be there, that you may heed the prayer that your servant prays toward this place. Hear the plea of your servant and of your people Israel when they pray toward this place. O oh, hear in heaven your dwelling place, heed and forgive. The word of the Lord. my King and 
and my God. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord mighty God. Happy are those who live in your house, ever singing your praise. Behold our shield, O God, look on the face of your anointed. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord mighty God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And when they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they purify themselves. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked Jesus, why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? Jesus said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites as it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Then Jesus said to them, You have a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God in order to keep your trad tradition. For Moses said, Honor your father and your mother, and whoever speaks evil of father and mother must surely die. But you say that if anyone tells father or mother, whatever support you might have had from me is Corban, that is, an offering to God, then you no longer permit doing anything for a father or mother, thus making void the word of God through your tradition that you have handed on, and you do many things like this. The Gospel of the Lord. As a convert to the Catholic Christian faith, one of the most attractive and appealing things about the Catholic Church is the way we practice and live out our call to be disciples within the beautiful traditions and structures of the Church. I haven't always been a rule follower in my life, but as I began to learn more and more about the Church and the traditions that we have, the more they opened up for me the way to a deeper relationship with Jesus Christ and with my brothers and sisters too. I began to see the world through the lens of a new Catholic Christian. It led me to greater love, charity, patience with others, and then a desire to live a virtuous life with Christ. As I've lived now a number of years as a Catholic, 13 to be exact, this same lens or paradigm becomes cloudy at times. I can be limited in my thinking, narrow-minded, judgmental, at times critical or legalistic. But when I catch myself, more often than I'd like to admit, thinking in this way, I know this is not from God, 
And I also know that I need to stop and reflect upon what I have lost along the way. I need to ask the Lord again for the newness and love which, with which I once saw things, because this really isn't the Catholic Christian way of thinking. Our tradition is not about narrow-mindedness, judgment, criticism, or legalism. It's about truth, beauty. It's about love. We have a Lord and Savior who modeled all these things for us. Our rules and traditions, if we truly take the time to know them, understand them, apply them, and live by them, they offer us a great freedom. They are about helping each of us to be the very best that we can be. But in order to grasp them and really, truly encounter the Lord, we need to be prepared to think outside the box. We need to be able to allow our way of thinking about things, our paradigms, to change. When I first became a Catholic and really encountered the Lord, and these words were new to my ears and my mind, I looked at the whole world for what it was. Beautiful, good in God's plan, I saw the positive, the glass half full, so to speak, not the darkness or pessimism, not the us versus them mentality that we sometimes can fall in the trap of. In our gospel today, Jesus reminds us of this. When the Pharisees and the scribes who knew the rules and traditions well become indignant about what they see as an affront to faith tradition, Jesus reminds them, and us too, that these are traditions based on the foundation of our faith. And they, then there are traditions which we've created to bind ourselves and others to the truth as we see it, not the God-given truth. These are not traditions that draw us closer to God. St. Anselm coined the phrase, faith seeking understanding. It's important that this is our living faith. There can be a tendency to interpret Jesus here as saying that all we need to do is to be a good person. The world certainly benefits from more of us being good people, but for us as Catholic Christians, we cannot interpret Jesus to be telling us the tradition and rules which have been handed on to us are of no importance. But our Lord speaks to us about our own disposition toward those rules and traditions. What do we use them for? Our faith and our understanding of Scripture and tradition is very important. We don't simply follow rules because they're there. We must try our best to understand them to listen to people who have different perspectives and hold a well-founded belief that if we have a particular rule of faith to guide us, then there must be a reason for it, to seek that reason, to find the answers. We become legalistic when we become complacent in this task. We grow in faith, hope, love, goodness, and holiness when we know why we do what we do. My friends in Christ, Jesus is calling us to go deeper in our faith. May we allow our faith to seek that understanding. We have a rich and beautiful faith in Jesus Christ, and we are all together on this journey of discovering that day by day. May God bless you. And as we come before the table of the Lord, we bring our prayers and our needs to our loving God, knowing that he hears and grants us in that need. For the church, guided by faith-seeking understanding that we may always be a beacon of joy as well as a compass along the journey of life, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For our church leaders, that all who lead others to follow Christ and intentional discipleship may lead with the joy of the gospel, we pray to the Lord. Lord for an increase in vocations, all vocations, but especially those to priesthood, religious life, and holy, healthy marriages, we pray to the Lord. Lord for the prayer intentions of our daily Mass, audience who have asked to be remembered, for those who are struggling with health issues, the loss of a loved one, unemployment, concerns for family members, we pray to the Lord. Lord Kind and loving God, hear and answer our prayers and those that remain in the silence of each one of our hearts. We make these prayers through Christ our Lord.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me. Thank you. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith. And his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise, for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. 
Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, the order of bishops, the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And at the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Would those of you at home join with me now in saying the morning offering? O Jesus, through the Immaculate Heart of Mary, I offer you my prayers, works, joys, sufferings of this day in union with the holy sacrifice of the Mass throughout the world. I offer them for all the intentions of your Sacred Heart, the salvation of souls, reparation for sin, the reunion of all Christians. I offer them for the intentions of our bishops and of all apostles of prayer, and in particular for those recommended by our Holy Father this month. Amen. Let us pray. Accompany with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your never-failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. If I could ask a special favor of you, I want to begin, first of all, by thanking you for being with us here today and on this TV, TV Mass. The special favor I ask is that you uh, pray for vocations. Jesus tells us to pray to the Lord of the harvest that he'll send laborers into the harvest. On behalf of all vocation directors in Canada, I ask you to pray to invite others to be committed disciples, and if you feel the Lord calling, answer him. You won't regret it. The Lord be with you. Yes. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our life. Thanks. Our thanks to our donor for the gift of this Mass. Oh, our prayer book costs $10. If you'd like to order it, please send a check or money order payable to the NCBC and send it to the NCBC, 21 Dunlop Street, Suite 100, Richmond Hill, Ontario, L4C 2M6. Imagine a CD with 25 of your favorite hymns from the past six missions. These 25 hymns will take you out of yourself and for a time at least put you in the presence of God. And he will bring 